Joe, have you ever been at a sporting event where you saw a beach ball start to get bopped around? I have, and I did a little bit of the bopping myself. It's fun to bop a ball. What happened to that beach ball? It was at a high school football game, and the principal grabbed it and gave us a mean look. She just held on to it and walked away. But she left it intact. She did leave it intact. She didn't, like, stomp on it or anything. That would have been very badass of her to do. Joe, I'm here to tell you, not only would it have been badass, it would have been the responsible thing to do. Because in the wrong hands, or in this case, in the wrong feet, a beach ball is a dangerous and potentially game-changing soccer weapon. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about why. Let's hear it. So one of the many tasks that a soccer referee is responsible for is dealing with what's called outside interference. And normally that means things like fans running onto the field or somebody blowing a whistle in the stands that's meant to sound like the referee's whistle. But it also includes non-human objects on the field that aren't supposed to be there. Do they have like a list of these non-human objects? Because that could mean anything. Joe, I'm, I'm so glad you asked. It's maybe not as fulsome a list as you or I might like, but according to FIFA Law of the Game 5, Section 3, if an extra ball, other object, or animal enters the field of play during the match, the referee must do one of two things. Stop play and restart it with a drop ball only if it interferes with play or allow play to continue if it does not interfere with play and have it removed at the earliest possible opportunity. But yeah, extra ball, other object, or animal. I love how they broke that down into these three separate categories. Like, how often are animals popping up? So you say that, but we both went to SEC schools. And if Auburn could get the War Eagle to block a kick, <laughs> Auburn would absolutely do that. That's fair. That's fair. I'm just imagining Ugga lazily, like, roaming out on the field, laying, not moving at all. Yeah, <laughs> just do something chilling. about it. Do something about it. You can't. The trickiest part of this rule, in my opinion is that it doesn't say, if something's on the field, stop the game. It says, stop the game if it interferes with play. Like, what 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 qualifies in your mind as interference? I'm just gonna put myself in the shoes of having a player, right? I wouldn't wanna be running through, like, shit and, like, falling all over the place. So anything that's, like, interfering my path. You're thinking, like, a Home Alone scenario. I am F thinking, like, a Home Alone scenario, F yeah. FC Kevin McAllister throws a bunch of ball bearings onto the field. <laughs> or, like, a grease trap somehow pops up on the field. Right. I would imagine the referee should probably stop that, right? Let me give you a couple of scenarios to test your interpretation skills. Let's hear him. What I will uh, mathematically call a shitload of balloons. It's enough balloons that if I brought them to you for your birthday, you'd be like, this is a little much. We're not that close. <laughs> Some of them, the same color as the ball, are randomly strewn in front of the goal. Because of the presence of these balloons, a defender attempting to stop a cross misses completely, does successfully hit one of the balloons, and by missing, allows his opponent to score what ends up being a very easy goal. <laughs> Yo, that's not fair. The defender just absolutely whiffs, and he looks pretty bad doing it, is the thing. I would be furious. That is very clear interference. The commentators on here basically argue that a balloon couldn't possibly change the direction of a, a, a shot on goal. And yes, it's distracting, but a distraction, I think they're implying, is not the same thing as interference. They want more of a, like, physics problem. A collides with B causing C. I don't think that's the right call, but it is, there is enough, like, room in the rule book that it's sort of like, maybe? It definitely stood, though. It definitely counted. The, the ref swallowed his whistle on that one. Or, you know, maybe he was just like, let's see what happens here. Worst case, yeah. this is going to be very funny. <laughs> so this is just... Totally all up to the referee's discretion, huh? Yes, yes, yes. And part of the problem is the last part of the rule, as I read it to you, is that if the object or the animal or the extra ball is not interfering with play, the officials are supposed to remove it at the earliest possible opportunity. But, like, interference is something that it doesn't sort of happen slowly over time. It, like, isn't interfering until it super is. Let's talk about scenario two. A beach ball, that's why I started here, winds up in front of the goal, but it's just sitting still and nobody does anything about it. This beach ball ends up deflecting a shot on goal such that it looks like the, the shot's gonna go to the keeper's right, 
Mm-hmm. It bounces off the beach ball and goes to the keeper's left. That is unfortunate. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. That is unfortunate. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's, I mean, like, the balloon situation, you can say, like, it's a distraction, but it's not like you attempted to kick the ball and the balloon headed it back into net. Honestly... I'm even more impressed because I feel like the dude purposely kicked the ball towards the beach ball so it could deflect Mm -hmm. and, like, go a different way Mm -hmm. and, like, switch up the angle. Because he, Mm -hmm. like, hit it perfectly right in front of the beach ball to where Oh, it's like a billiard shot. It's like watching somebody do a really cool billiard shot. (laughs) He's like, beach ball, corner pocket. (laughs) (laughs) I think it for sure should have been overturned because you can see, like, the trajectory of the ball literally going away from where it was shot because it hit the beach ball. Mm-hmm. Did they overturn this? I, I, I doubt they did, did they? Joe, Joe, they did not. This happened in a Sunderland-Liverpool match. Again, very early in the game. This ends up being the only goal of the entire match. The one, only goal? Yes, a 1-0 Sunderland victory. Everyone's so pissed. Like, even Darren Bent, who theoretically scores this goal, I think the credit should yeah. go to the beach ball. <laughs> He, at one point, goes over to the ref and is like, should that have counted? Was that, was that okay? The ref is like, did it hit the beach ball? And Darren Bent's like, yeah, man, it super did. But at that point, he's already awarded the goal and he's just decided to move on with, with his life and the lives of everyone else. Or so he thought, because um, this referee definitely got demoted after this match and... The kid who put the ball on the field in the first place said that he got death threats because, much like our first example, Joe, this ball is red. And that's because it was purchased (laughs) at the Liverpool Lake gift shop. So a Liverpool fan was responsible for this being in place and causing a Liverpool loss. That is extremely unfortunate. Um, The beach ball is in the National Football Museum. (laughs) It's so in the it lives, National it, Football Museum. That's right. It it has a place of honor and enshrinement. I my pride would be so shot if I go in there as a player and like no plaque for me, but it's this beach ball just enshrined <laughs> and like it's like the main attraction. Everybody's taking pictures of the beach ball. They like yeah. forget the trophies and everything. It's just mm-hmm. the beach ball is the main attraction of the museum. Here's my question: Because it's a Liverpool beach ball, was this an own goal? At that point, yeah. It has to be, right? Okay, yeah, it has, sure. It has to be all gold. Sure. It has to be. Soccer's great. I think uh, <laughs> the two things about soccer that everybody agrees is that it's fun and it's not controversial in any way. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Special thanks to DraftKings Sportsbook for partnering with us on this video. DraftKings Sportsbook is giving all new players a deposit bonus up to $1,000 with their first deposit. Just download the DraftKings Sportsbook app, check out everything they're offering like parlays and player props, then watch some more weird rules while the games play out. If Sportsbook isn't yet available in your state, don't forget about the DraftKings Fantasy app. They're offering millions of dollars in total prizes every week. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app, use promo code SECRETBASE, all one word, Bet just $5 on any NFL team to win their game and win $280 in free bets. It's America's top-rated sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and reliable. You can deposit and withdraw your money at your convenience. DraftKings had my back when my fantasy football season turned into a bit of a tire fire, but their fantasy app meant I could still have fun without the usual season-long trials and tribulations. Use promo code SECRETBASE, subscribe to SECRETBASE on YouTube, and Despite how secretive you think we are based on our name, please tell all your friends and family. We'll see you soon.